Okay, hello everyone. So this is Ashley Insane. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We are doing books I read in 2022. However, it is months after 2022. And the reason this is happening is because I had this video beautifully filmed, edited, it was great, everything is fantastic. Then everything on my iPad deleted, including another YouTube video that is in fact unsalvageable. So that one, which was a really cute vlog of my field trip to Key West with my friends, gone forever. I'm really sad because it was really good, but anyhow. I then go back onto my camera SD card to get the videos back. The Key West videos are gone and I only have six out of seven of the videos for this vlog. So in roughly five minutes, you will see me in a completely different outfit, in a completely different mood. I probably have a little bit more life in my eyes. But I was like, I'm not a quitter, I'm gonna do this. So I here I am doing the intro again for this video and doing the first few books. So let's get right into January. So the first book I read in 2022 was The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. Quick summary, you're following Olive and Adam, who Olive is a PhD student, Adam is one of the teacher people professors, and she's trying to get her PhD. I loved the academic jargon in this. I loved the sort of rivals, enemies to lovers plot. I loved that it didn't just focus on the romance, there was actual plot happening and like great twists in the end and a great outcome. And I think if you're just getting into like romance novels, you should definitely check this one out because it's like, it's pretty tame, it's pretty cute and adorable and very well written. There's fake dating in this. I think it is a perfect book to start off with if you are interested in reading romance novels. The next book that I read is my favorite book that I read of 2022. It is to this day one of my favorite books I've ever read. It is called Dance of Thieves by Mary Ear Pearson. This is another enemies to lovers young adult fantasy novel that has a plot and storytelling that is just so beautifully written that I was never once confused. I was never once like what's going on. It's just built upon very very well that you'll be halfway through the book and you'll be like I fully understand everything like I, there was never any confusion so it follows the story from two different perspectives Kazi who is like one of the Queen's elite guards who's going on a secret mission to find out if there's like a legal activity going on in Jace's Ballinger like kingdom type thing which is not recognized by everybody else but they have a secret mission they're like looking for someone and both of them end up getting kidnapped and they're chained together so it's like forced proximity they have to escape this desert together and along the way they become closer like you already know what happens like you know it's gonna be good and this book is just so beautifully written that it's just I have to recommend it to everybody because it is so good. So the story building is just 10 out of 10, world building 10 out of 10, action 10 out of 10, romance 10 out of 10. Everything is about this book is a 10 out of 10 and it is perfect in every single way that I can imagine and that is why it is my favorite book of 2022. These are my notes. The next book I read is Rules for Being a Girl by Candace Bushnell and Katie Katugno. It, it is one of those books where a teen has a feminist awakening after being assaulted by a teacher and it reminds me of the movie Moxie which I did like on Netflix however I did not like this book. I liked it has this book club storyline that I liked. This was actually my least favorite read of 2022 which is kind of funny considering I just had my favorite read of 2022 so I would not recommend this. It felt a little young even though it's like supposed to be a young adult novel it just felt kind of like immature the whole time I was reading it I I mean that's all really how much time I'm gonna spend on it because I wouldn't really necessarily recommend this to anybody so we're just gonna move right along okay for the next two books this is happening now on my phone because just my camera's just not she's not being nice to me the next book I read was Paradise of the Blind by Duong Phu Huang and this was for school we we're doing authoritarian states so we moved to Vietnam this is a Bildung's Roman it's a fictional coming of age model and you're following Hang and it's going like in the future and in the past from her childhood to her future adult life and how she is traversing the hardships of living in a communist Vietnam. This was a very thought-provoking story and it had beautiful, beautiful imagery. I wouldn't suggest it unless you needed a good book for school to write an essay on because other than that, this just isn't the type of book that I personally would go about spending my free time reading. But if you're into these Bildungsroman, authoritarian states, sort of realistic fictional novels, then this is probably a good one for you. Fabulous. So that was January and I read 1,475 pages, which was actually a really good month for this year. So then we get to February and the 
first book that I read in February is a book that I told myself I would never read, and then I did. It's Akatar, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. This is a really, really, really big TikTok book. It's a fantasy, young adult, fictional novel, and you're following Feyre. She accidentally kills a wolf, which ends up being a fairy, and not fairy, but fairy. And she has to go to like the spring court, and then there's this guy Tamlin, and then there's these evil people, and just to like go under the mountain and complete these challenges to save these people. And basically, you can tell based on my little sticky marks that the action in the novel is literally like this much. But it was still really, really good, and I did really enjoy this. This is one of my favorite of the Akatar series. So I do recommend the Akatar series because I feel like it's just something that if you're part of Book Talk and you read fantasy novels, you just have to read these. And they're so fast. Like, I literally read this in a singular day, so I think it's just really doable. And this was my first book of February. And now you are going to see a different human being as she explains A Court of Mist and Fury. Obviously, the next book that I read is... Akamov, which is A Court of Mist and Fury, which I did like better because there was more action happening and you get to see more of Rysand, who I didn't, or Reese, Rysand, who I didn't mention in the first one, but I should have. But he's like this mysterious, creepy guy who's like the High Lord of the Night Court. Feyre makes a bargain with this man because she almost dies in the first one. More spoilers, and then Tamlin doesn't do anything to help her, ever. This book was good. This book was good. We got to see her. She becomes, she, if, at the end of the last book, major spoiler, she becomes a High Fae because she dies. And then like all of the High Lords or whatever like give her a little bit of their power. You meet me, Asriel, Cassian, Moore, Amryn, who are like all fabulous. There's a lot happening. And there's just a lot more politics and drama and twists. So that's why I did like this one better. And then we have the next book I read, A Court of Wings and Fury, which is the third book, the next book in the series. And this is like when the war happens and all hell breaks loose and you see more of Elaine and Nesta who are her sisters. So the thing about this book for me is that so much happens, but also like nothing happens. Like so much happens, but internally I felt like nothing happens. Like Feyre has all of these super cool crazy powers, doesn't use them. The only thing that really happens is like her relationship with like her and Rice. These were such, these books were just books that it was just like, if you don't want to have to think and like you can get really invested into it, then these are the books for you. Okay, so then after this, I read A Court. So this is a novella and it's like an extended epilogue to the end of the war. It's supposed to be like a breather between the next book, but I didn't know the next book was a thing. So I kind of just read this and I was kind of just like, eh. if you're reading the series and you know the characters, you're going to be interesting. So this is just like what this book is. So the next book that I read was The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue by V.E. Schwab. And V.E. Schwab is like this crazy amazing author, like in insane writing skills. Like I, I wish I could be her. This book was just so boring. It was like such a pain to get through. Most beautiful writing, but I just like could not get through it. So it's a fantasy novel that swaps back and forth in time and you're following obviously the life of like Addie LaRue and she makes this deal with the devil, right? That she gets immortality, but in return, nobody's gonna remember her. I wish I could have seen a lot more of them and a lot less of like these random, unnecessary like backstories that probably were necessary, but in my brain I was just like, no, like get me to the action, get me to like this boy that remembers her, or like get me to her seeing the creepy devil guy. It was amazing writing, very good lessons in there, very good quotes that you could like put up on a Pinterest board. It just, you know, you, we understand each other, we know, we know. But viewers was a very big one. I read 2,560 pages, which is a lot, if I dare say, whole five books. In March, I read a duology, so it's Daughter of the Pirate King by Tricia Levenseller, and then Daughter of the Siren Queen by Tricia Levenseller. So, like, spoiler alert, this girl's daughter, she's, like, half pirate, half siren. Half human, half siren. These are fantasy fiction novels. The first one, you're following Princess Alosa, who's this bad bee right here, and she gets herself kidnapped on this, like, famous pirate cruise ship. Raiden, who's like the guy on the other pirate ship, and it's rivals to lovers. Then Princess Alosa's goal is to get a piece of a treasure map. They fall in love, obviously. She's so cool, by the way. So I love her character. I love both of their characters so much. So these are like easy reads, lovely. Something I forgot to say is that she's captain of an all-female pirate crew. 
if that isn't a reason to buy this book, then I don't know what is. So in this one, spoilers, she ends up getting all the pieces of a map. And she now has like Raiden and his crew as her captive. Chaos ensues, obviously. And just, it was a great plot. It was something that I hadn't seen before because I hadn't really read like a siren book before. But now I'm in love with them. I want to read all the siren and pirate books in existence. I really, really recommend these books. These were a great read. It was so chill. So these were the only two books that I read in March. So that's 704 pages. Now we're moving on to April. I don't have the book here. But this was another book that I read for school. It, this book is called All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. I would recommend this book even if it wasn't for school. You're following two perspectives. You're following this little boy called Werner who is going to this academy for like young German boys and he's like this crazy smart engineer. And then the girl who's a blind French girl. So we have opposite sides of the war happening. Um, her name's Marie Lore. Werner was my favorite character and his little friend, but I could not put this book down. It was so realistic and so beautiful and so good. And what happens to Werner, what happens to meet Marie Lore was like so tragic and beautiful and good entirely fictional by the way this is historical fiction so good so 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 good the next book that i read was also for school so i read the thief by fumi nori nakamura you're following nishimura who's this pickpocket in tokyo and just like this was a book written by men for men there was like barely any female characters and the ones that were there they were like prostitutes and it's just like mm. It was okay. Next book that I read, it's called Sisters of Sword and Song, and it's by Rebecca Ross. I picked it up because I thought I had a pretty cover. This is about two sisters. The older one is called Halcyon, and the younger one is called Ivane. And Halcyon is trained for the Queen's Army, and then she like comes back home, commutes like a horrible crime, and then Ivane chooses like, you know what, like I'm gonna take five of my sister's years and like be a slave. I don't really remember what happens in this book except for the end. It just tells me all that you have to know about this book in the sense that it's like rushed. Like this could have been two books and it could have been played out beautifully I feel like. It wasn't bad at all. Like this was not a bad book. There's also a magical element to this which was cool but I feel like it could have been explored more. Moving on is another really big book series that I read that I like more than Akatar. This is probably my, like, it's under Dance of Thebes. It's right there. The Ember in the Ashes series by Sava Tahir. You're following two perspectives, Laia, who's a slave, and Elias. Elias is a soldier. He's also my favorite character. So we have opposite sides of, like, the world right now. So basically, Laia becomes a slave because her brother is arrested. She joins this rebellion cause. And you have this like head guy who's like super horrible and just conquering all of these lands. But Elias doesn't agree with that. But he has to pretend that he does. But his mom is like the number one commander, like most feared, crazy, insane, like horrible, horrible lady. So they obviously meet up at some point. Then we have a torch against the night, which is just like you start to you start to learn more about the magical elements because there are magical elements, which the magical elements are hella cool in this book and super original and I've never seen them before. And this author is like amazing and I don't know why these books aren't like oh my god I forgot about Helen. Oh my god. These books are just so anyway, so now these two are like running for their lives. They start to get closer. Both of their destinies are like meant to be somehow connected to each other and it's just fabulous. The most fabulous thing I've ever Oh, okay. The world building is so intense, but also I understood it so well, which just shows what a great author she is. The writing is just like insane. The storytelling and the world building and the characters and the plot, it's just scrum diddly umptious. Scrum diddly umptious. That was April. We read a total of 2,227 pages because I have to get right into May because it's Reaper at the Gates which is the third book. We know all about these magical elements now and it's just like getting really intense because there's like this scary evil demon, the djinn, right? The djinn. This series is one of the most original series I have ever read in my entire life. I've never seen anything else like this. Moving on, we have the last one which is A Sky Beyond the Storm. Guys, I don't think you understand how intense and I was like shaking in my boots because of how the anxiety the way that this author just like pulls you in like grabs you by the neck and then does not let you go I do want to say there were moments when I read these books where I had to physically put them down because I genuinely thought that I was gonna barf because she is such an incredible incredible author that some of the descriptions of these horrible massacres and events and things that they were seeing made me physically nauseous but if that doesn't really bother to you or you think you can handle it then I would say read these in like a heartbeat. Go out and buy them and read them right now. Like if there's ever a movie coming out about these, like put me in the back. 
I'll be like slave girl number seven. Like, I'm not even kidding. I really recommend these. Is basically all you need to know. That concludes January, February, April, May. May and that was 1,008 pages. Okay, I then read The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. This was another for school book, but weird. Because I'm an IB student, full IB diploma. So I have to write a 4,000 word essay so this is one of the books that i read it is a historical fiction about the trojan war and you're following the perspective of Briseis, who is the slave girl that achilles won who like him and agamemnon fight over and everyone blames her for like their fighting and then you read her perspective and it's like literally why would this be her fault like she has no choice in this matter i genuinely love this i really recommend it i think everyone should read this because it was so eye-opening and so well written and very very interesting moving on i read to kill a kingdom which is a standalone this one is a young adult dark romantic fantasy novel and this one is about princess lyra obviously she's siren royalty and like the most lethal siren she has like seven princess hearts because that's like what happens here you like eat the heart and you remain young or whatever she's 17 not seven she's 17 princes in her collection and then she actually she kills one of her own and then her mother the sea queen who's like this evil lady so she punishes her by making her human and then she's like stranded in the ocean and guess who happens to pick her up in the middle of the ocean none other than prince elian who was like the number one siren hunter in like the heart so she has to get his heart and he like wants to kill sirens i think these like boys are so dumb because miss girl is naked in the middle of the ocean it's revealed that she can like speak the siren language everybody's just like oh how do you know that and she's like oh i just learned it all of them are just like mm. la -dee -dee. great fighting scene it was low-key kind of confusing to read like the fighting scene i just started making it up in my own head i thought this story was amazing and cool and if you want a standalone it was pretty dark and also romantic so if you want that then i say read to kill the kingdom okay so i know that i said that i was like oh i'm taking a break from like series is like i'm not gonna read any series i read throne of the glass by sarah j mass another sarah j mass book this is so much better than akatar so you're following selena 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 sardothian she is in prison because she is like an incredible assassin elite she worked for this guy she gets picked up by kale who is like the number one like general guard and she gets taken to the palace of the super evil king and dorian havilar who is the prince has chosen her as his champion to compete in this competition to become the king's champion there's obviously this competition happening but then there's a lot of like backdoor politics and magical elements happening that you're kind of sitting there and you're kind of just going this is gonna connect later, isn't it? And then it does. I ate this up. Like, I don't think you understand how much I ate this up. The next book I read in June is The Penelope by Margaret Atwood. Basically, it's a fictional novella that I also read for this essay I had to write. It's about like Penelope, obviously, but also the chorus of the 12 maids who Odysseus murdered. Again, you're just seeing a different interpretation of the events that happened and you're, you're realizing like, mm, not having 50% of the story or like the other perspective really does like mess with the way that you view these stories and what they mean about culture so i thought that was really cool and i do recommend that because it's short and it was pretty good and it's margaret atwood so that was what i read in june and it was 1304 pages but in july i read the woman of troy by pat barker which is kind of a sequel kind of not a sequel you're following the perspectives of the women in troy so you're following like cassandra all of those queens all of those sisters you read all of these perspectives and same thing that i said again women's point of view and so cool so different this was really good i really did enjoy this one so i would recommend reading this one if you read silence the girls and then we have another one that i read for this essay i had to write which is a thousand ships by natalie haynes so this is a story of like all of the women so you're reading about every single woman main character or like side character or like just regular person who was infected in some way by this war you're seeing their lives and you're seeing how this war affected their lives and it's called like the women's epic because it's about the women i would recommend reading this one more than the woman of troy less than silence the girls i recommend all of these i thought they were good so in july we read 652 pages so moving on we are now in august which means like beginning the senior year college app so i'm sorry guys but it's not it's not getting very good 
but I read A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. So it's an essay in which Virginia Woolf is exploring women in literature. Like she literally starts by saying like, i am been asked to explore the topic of women in literature, women in fiction, and why they've been absent from it, why they like don't really exist in it. She goes to the library, can't find anything. She comes up with like the imaginary example of Judas Shakespeare, which is if like William Shakespeare had a sister. I highly recommend this book. It was an essay, so it wasn't like reading a novel at all in any way, shape or form. It scratched a part of my brain that made me appreciate literature so much more and the fact that like I get to participate in literature so much more and it was also it was short enough that it's not painful okay the next book that I read so random again A Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Maas like why am I doing this to myself there's so many spoilers that I don't feel like I can say anything but this book was just as good as the first one. I was shook literally the entire time with the things that just keep like popping up, especially something that happens with like Dorian's character. They're just really good. So yeah, I'm excited to read the next one. So in September, it was a really busy month. There was a lot happening. So I didn't read anything in September, which is weird, but it happened. But I did read something in October and it's Othello by William Shakespeare. And I read it for school. If I had to say anything about this book, it would be watch the play. There's no reason to read the play when you can watch the play and like feel the emotion and you are probably going to be able to understand what's happening a lot more because you see stuff happening. There's so many relevant themes in it and that just connect to modern times that maybe that's not what Shakespeare meant when he wrote it but that's how you can interpret it now. So I do recommend seeing this play and trying or trying to read it if you want to. November we had the same issue. There was a lot going on. I read no books in November. But in December, in December, I pulled through. I hadn't read any books for so long. And I read A Court of Silver Flames, okay? She's here in all of her 756 pages of glory. When I started reading this book and I realized that it was like only about Nesta, I got so upset because I do not like that girl. I thought she was so horrible and just compared to everything that Feyre did for her family, I was like, this girl is like not it. But then we continue reading. Nesta starts getting called out by like Cassian and she starts internally realizing like, realizing like oh I kind of was a horrible person and then I was like okay now now I like her like she realizes that she did not do well but that she can do better in the future you meet Gwen and Emery and you meet the whole Valkyrie crew and it's so cool like all of the training is really cool and also seems kind of realistic like it, it takes months for them to actually get good like it doesn't it doesn't just happen in a day I ended up really really liking this book I liked Akatar and then I liked Akos. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that I ended up enjoying it and that it was my last read of 2022. Those are my books that I read in 2022 and I hope that everybody thoroughly enjoyed this. If we do our little recap, I officially read 28 books and 10,180 pages in 2022. Thank you so much. Really appreciated that and I hope everyone has a fantastic 2023 reading year. Bye everyone! Thank you.